Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. In today's video, I am going to talk about Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an open source analytics and full text search engine. Elasticsearch is built on top of Apache Lucene and Apache Lucene is a Java library which provides powerful indexing and search features. Apart from Elasticsearch, in the Elasticsearch ecosystem, there are other products like Kibana, which is essentially a visualization tool for Elasticsearch. But I'm not going to cover that in this video. It is for another video. Now let's talk about the use case for Elasticsearch, in which case we are going to use Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch, as the name suggests, we should be using it anywhere and everywhere we have a search requirement. Traditional RDBMS databases are not very good with indexing. Their indexing capacity capability are limited and if we create too many indexes it becomes very expensive very quickly whereas Elasticsearch is built for indexing and full text search so any search requirement we should be using Elasticsearch the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the Elasticsearch and for installation I'm just going to use a docker image and this is the command for docker image it's docker pool and then Elasticsearch version number 7.11 if you just Google for Elasticsearch Docker image, you can get this command. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Elasticsearch. And for run, the default port where Elasticsearch is open is for 9200. So I'm going to again copy paste this command and run the Elasticsearch. And as you can see, I'm running on a single node cluster. If you are using it for a server infrastructure, I would suggest using managed Elasticsearch provided by either Amazon or Azure because because it's going to be much more simpler that way. Once it is up and running, what we can do is we can go to localhost 9200. And if we run this, we can see that the Docker cluster is started. It's a default name, Docker cluster. We could have changed the name to something else. And it is up and running. Now, if we want to see what are the indexes available, we can just go and do slash underscore aliases. And right now we don't have any index set up. So for the purpose of the demo, we are going to create a set of users under users alias or users index. So for doing that, I'm just going to use plain old Postman. So in the Postman, I already have some users. So the URL is localhost 9200 and then users is whatever index we want. It doesn't exist right now, but eventually it will. And then underscore bulk is for bulk upload. And then here, we are going to pass the JSON object for the users and as you can see it's a little bit different in terms of it's not a valid JSON it is not as you can see it is not encapsulated the second thing you have to remember is you have to provide a new line after the last record otherwise the bulk is going to throw an error and then we will be passing index before every record we send and given that we are using users and index we don't have to pass any index name here now if we send this request it is going to create the set of users and we should get created response back and as we can see there is no error and the users are created and every user has an ID it's an important thing but not necessarily we need to know or use every time but there is a use of this one I'm going to show later so as you can see the index is user now if we get back to the Chrome browser and if we refresh this now we can see users showing up as one of the index once the data is ready what we can do is we can go to localhost 9200 users which is our index and underscore search if we just execute this it is going to show all the users that we have added and you can see here it's showing the user 1 then user 2 then user 3 user 4 and user 5 all the users that we added are going to show up here now the next thing what we are going to do is we are going to access this elastic search using a .NET 5 application and for that I'm going to create a .NET 5 web application and I'm going to name it at elasticsearch.demo and for the framework as I said I'm going to use .NET 5 so in this case it's going to be ASP.NET Core 5.0 and I'm going to create a simple web API application once the project is created, I'm going to get rid of the default controller, which is the weather controller. I'm also going to get rid of the weather forecast model. And then I'm going to create a new class and it's going to be the user. That's the model. And for the user, we are going to have three properties. String name. Age.
address. The string here for age is not coincidental or by mistake. It is intentional. The reason is when we added the data, we added age as a string. So if we don't provide string here while we start using this object, the Elasticsearch API is going to fail unless we delete the data and recreate the data with int as an age, meaning we pass int here without quotes. This is an important fact. That's why I wanted to share so that you understand that whatever data type is inserted through JSON, same data type has to reflect in the .NET object. So once we are done with that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a user controller and I'm going to create an API controller and it's going to be users controller and here I'm going to get rid of the get it's not important I'm going to keep this get and I'll change it to a string I'm going to keep the post it's going to be user similarly the response for the get will be an user and then I'm going to get rid of the put and delete. We don't need it. And here for the time being, I'm just going to return a new user so that we don't get any reds quickly. Now that this class is ready, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the necessary NuGet package for Elasticsearch. So the package for Elasticsearch is Nest. So if we search Nest, this is the one we will be using. And as you can see, it support .NET standard version 2.0. Hence, we should be able to use it in .NET 5 application. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. Once it is installed, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the startup. And here, I'm going to create an instance of the Elastic Client. Now, Elastic Client depends on something called connection settings. So we're going to use that first. And for that, I have to add the nest namespace. So I'll add it. A connection settings, it has a default constructor, plus it has a constructor which takes URI and few other variations. Now the one which takes URI is where you can pass the URI, but if you don't pass the URI, by default, it will go to localhost 9200. So I'm not going to pass anything because that's where my local machine is running at least. And then what we can do is, we can then add services dot add Let's add singleton and here I can use I elastic client and for I elastic client here I can do new of elastic client and pass the settings as the constructor parameter. And if we don't want to create the instance like this, we can always register connection settings into the dependency injection and just expect it to be injected to Elastic Client. But since we are not going to use connection settings anywhere, it doesn't make sense just to add it to the dependency injection container. Hence, I'm not doing that. So once this is done, now the Elastic Client is available throughout the application. So what we are going to do is first, I'm going to go here, create a constructor. And here I'll expect a I elastic client to be injected. And I'm going to add first the nest namespace. And secondly, I'll create a field for elastic client. I'm going to get rid of the unwanted namespaces. Now, when a get is done, we want to return a user based on the username passed. So I'm going to keep this still as ID, but we'll be expecting a name in the parameter. So for that, what we are going to do is there are two options. First option is doing a direct get async, which is just getting a particular user based on an ID. And second option is to use the search. I'm going to start with search because that is what we are going to use most of the time. Search is the feature that we want to use from Elasticsearch, not necessarily getting a direct document based on ID. Because if we have to do that, we might as well just use a simple RDBMS. Here in my example, I'm just showing a string as a name, but it can be any combination of search criteria. So here what I can do is I can do a var response is equal to elastic client dot search. I'm going to use the search async. And here for the search async, it is going to be the user because we are trying to search an user. And then what we are going to do is we are going to use the lambda function of search descriptor, which returns a search request. 
so we're going to say as dot query and in the query again we're going to use another func define the query terms so we'll say query dot term and in the term we're going to say name is the name property and here for the name value we are going to pass the id or we can say query dot match and we can say match on a field and the field we are expecting is field dot name and then query on the value which is the incoming id so that's going to be our response and then finally we are going to say return response dot documents i have to use an await statement here and i'll make this as a sync task of user i'll add the namespace system the threading dot task and then here i can do dot documents dot fast or default and for this i have to add the links namespace I can now get rid of this return statement. So that's for getting an user based on an ID pass. And then finally, we can use this value to post, but I'm going to do it later. First, let's run this and I'm going to change it into console mode. So once we run this, it's going to start up and then we go here, the get user ID, try it out and we can say, user1 execute and once we execute we get the index name as null because we have not passed any index name so there are two ways we can pass an index name the first way is we can pass it in the search itself and the second way we can pass it here in the connection setting so here what we can do is for settings we can go ahead we can say dot default mapping for and here we can say user and then it's going to take a mapping descriptor delegate and we can say here we can say what index name we are looking for and the index name is users for us so if we do that we have set up the index at the connection settings level so throughout this project everywhere where we can just deal with this index but if we have to deal with different indexes for different queries we have to do it where we call it i'm going to show it in a minute first let's see how this works so now let's run it again and after the swagger shows up we're going to try it again and now here again let's give user one execute and this time you can see the response is showing up as expected now i'm going to show how we can do it in the search async request itself so we can get rid of this code from here and then we can come here and here what we can do is we can do dot index and at this place we can pass the index as users so now if I run it and I execute the same query I should get the exact same result so we can go we can try it out and if I pass user one and execute you can see we're getting the exact same result as before so this is shows how we can use the search async function of the elastic client to search on a particular index and as you can see we use the query term and then match to match a query now for the use case that we are using we really don't need to have term we can just use match and we should get the exact same result because we are just matching on a field and we are providing what is the expected name and if I run this now and I go ahead and execute this I should see the exact same behavior as before so the next thing I wanted to show is instead of using a search if we want to use a direct get now direct get becomes a little bit complex because for direct get to work we have to provide an ID An ID is something which is coming from the create response so if I say var response is equal to elastic client dot get async and here I pass the user and then this one also we need to pass a new as you can see we can pass I get request or a document path of the user so if we do that if we pass the document path we can say new of document path of user and then here it expects an ID so again we can say new of ID and for the ID 
we need to pass the identifier of this particular document that we are looking for now here what we need to do in this case is we need to pass id like this so as i mentioned earlier first of all it is complex and then i don't think it's very useful to search by id but i just wanted to show you that this is doable as well i can take the id from here and we are going to pass the id that we saw in the postman earlier but here cannot use document anymore instead what we are going to use is source and as you can see source returns a user object so that's all we need now if we run this application again and once it started if we go we try it out again but this time we provide the id from here instead of providing user one and execute i'm missing the index again so let's go and fix it so here i have to pass the index so after the document path i can take if you see that we get a get descriptor so we can say and this is going to give an option to pass the index that we are searching for and it is the user so let's run again and once it is up and running we can again go try it out pass the id and execute and we get the exact same result as before so this shows the get option and then finally i wanted to show how we can add a value to the elastic search programmatically not just using bulk we can use bulk also but if we want to add one user at a time what we are going to use so here what we can do again we can say var response is equal to elastic client dot index i'm going to use index async user and it's going to be await and then this one also is going to be async task of string and i'm going to tell you why it is string and then after this is done we are going to pass the value which is the incoming value and then just like before we need to pass the index so we can say dot index and for the index we can pass the users and then finally we're going to return response dot id and this is the id automatic id that will be created when we make a post call so let's try this out so if we go here and run this and once it is started we can go post we can try it out here for name we can say new name for age 25 and for address new address and if we execute see we got in the response body this id back and we got a 200 because it's created now to validate this if we go back to localhost 9200 user search and refresh this we can see the new name h25 address the user that we added is now visible here and we can see the id is this which is exactly what we got in our response so this is all i wanted to cover as a part of this one this is just scratching the surface of what all we can do with elastic search there are quite a few advanced features as well as using kibana for visualization which i'm going to cover in future videos if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you are new to my channel and if you think you are going to get value out of my channel please subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions or queries please leave it in the comment section below and thanks so much for watching this video